Hi, and welcome to Microcasters. What's up? Sorry. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Wait. I, I, I don't know. Uh, were you, you waiting stuff? for a diesel thing? Yeah, could... I just, you know, I don't know. Throwing off. It's like we took a week off and, you know, so. I literally <laughs> forgot the show existed. That's what That's happened. That's just mean. That's just mean. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't make, like, one of your fun photos for the... I know. I forgot the show existed. I mm. The weird thing is, I totally took a photo for it. Had no idea why that photo was on my phone when I got to work today. Because I looked at it, I was like, why did I take a picture of toys? <laughs> what is this? And, yeah, then, like... And and, and you were I'm like, oh, oh wait, yeah, I'm, I'm on a podcast? Show. I like Transformers? I, I guess I completely forgot my identity. <laughs> where where am I? Yeah. Um, Question is so, where am I? I'm in a different place. Yeah, Christian's in like you a are. different room, like in a different city. Yeah. So this is what my setup will look like forever, but yeah, you know, right everything's in boxes and everything's all over the place. I moved on Saturday, so next week hopefully it'll be nicer. I'm gonna try and get some whiter lights as opposed to this yellow one, but. Anyway, hi, I'm here. Randall asked me to post a photo now, so it's happening. Oh, cool. Yeah, except I didn't make a caption for it or anything. So, so it's literally Anna, what, just are you, what are you posting a photo of so we know what we're talking about? I, I have to post the photo first so we can't talk about it. Oh, this post is the way faster. it goes. Post faster. Faster? You want me to do something fast? You know what happens when I do something fast? I forget the entire podcast exists. Ooh, I can put it in our own comments. Isn't that like... There, there you go. You could do no, this I podcast for like... Wrong. I actually can't put an attachment now, there. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, we've do, we've been doing this for like almost a year now. We're coming up on our anniversary. So, so your show, anniversary. I can't even actually after, look but. to see... So do we count the anniversary from like the first time that Ann and I just randomly got on like Facebook... And started yes. talking, or when we actually started, you know, like having a background and and actually. I don't know. Is the birth like, of microcasters like, when I joined you to give you guys some cred, or is it when you guys just started? <laughs> 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 just no, no, no. It's it's the time that Lucas and I recorded, and I get anxious about posting videos to the internet and accidentally deleted it. Oh, oh yeah. That's the beginning. Remember that? It was awesome. Yeah. So I was like, oh, God, are we really going to do this? And I tried to edit it because I think I said, like, a swear word or something. I got nervous. Yeah. Well, I and, just and swear the whole... all the time. Constantly. In <laughs> class, especially. And I, I was debating, too, about, like, so we have all the videos on Facebook. And I was debating about, like, should we actually put all of the videos on YouTube? Should we, like, actually start, like, labeling this as, like, episode, you know, whatever it is? 20 some or 50 some or whatever i don't know what, what we're at you're gonna be like even, right? 40 or right now right something like yeah that. yeah so like yeah i probably should do that but yeah you know, uh, a little work so so anyway yeah, um, it should always just be named whatever we're looking at <laughs> that's which yeah, is that's pretty much what it is so this week we are doing our favorite iron factory figures because so Normally we uh, we don't talk that much about uh, Iron Factory because I've I've been collecting Iron Factory but Anna like really hasn't been and none of the other TFYLP cast like really collects them like Sean has a few um, mainly that I've sold him um, but you know most of the other cast is not doing Legends so we haven't done a I... lot of Iron Factory shows I think we've done maybe a couple. Lucas, I literally don't own an Iron Factory figure that you didn't sell me. There, There's one, not a single Iron Factory figure in my collection that you have not owned previously. I, I think we could probably say this about the entire cast, right? Because Christian owns one Iron Factory figure, right? And it came from me, right? Did it? Didn't it? Yeah, yes. a Rush Beats. Yeah. Which you've also sold me a Rush Beats. Yes. And you have one currently as well, don't you? 
No, no. No, no, I just have the one you sold. Okay, so not that many. So, yeah. Yeah. So, it might go around the shelf. I might go get it if we need it, but otherwise. And I think, I, I'm pretty sure all of Sean's current Iron Factor figures, like I sold, I, I, I take that back. I think he has the Tarn figure that uh, I did not sell. But for the most part, like most of the figures that everyone in the cast owns has come from me. So. This may sound like we're implying that Lucas is like, employed by Iron Factory or something, but we're really just implying that Lucas buys and sells a lot of figures. Yeah. yeah there. I'm, I'm, he changes his mind a lot. That's that's what it really means. Yeah, I like to buy and sell stuff. So. You do. So anyway, it's okay. So, so, so yeah. We're going to talk about Iron Factory. And for those of you who don't know, because we didn't say it, Iron Factory is one of the companies that is best known for making third-party Legends figures. Um, I think that's all they've ever made is Legends figures and that we know of, unless they're secretly another company in disguise or what have you. Um, I can't think of anything not Legends. I anyway, know. so they're one of the companies. Yeah, no, they've been making like Legends it. for probably the longest of all the big companies doing them. They've gone through several phases of like kind of mediocre figures to slightly better figures to finally now figures that even Anna likes. Because um, I own three Iron Factory figures. <laughs> do you? Yeah. That's... I totally forgot that I have Turrets and Manacle. The oh, Metroplex upgrade guys. Yeah, that yeah. Was... Turrets and Manacle were uh, from the Metroplex set, right? It was like yeah. six... there's Six Gun and what's the Slammer. other? Slammer, yeah. So. Oh, so those aren't legend size then, right? Those are bigger. No, they're they legend, legend size. size. Oh, okay. Actually, Got I it. have those too. <coughs> I forgot I had those. Sorry, I have three legend figures. Well, apparently okay. they made a chest plate too. So. Yeah. See, I couldn't remember Randall if they were the ones that did that or if that was Planet X. But yeah. Well, perfect. So. Iron Factory has made some stuff, but they're mostly known for the legend figures, and. We, we were just joking about how <clears throat> all the Legends figures that I own have actually been previously owned by Lucas because, for me, Iron Factory is probably my least favorite of the third-party companies just because I didn't like their older figures. But now their newer stuff is really starting to grow on me. So I guess they'll be one of my favorites these days. <coughs> Soon enough. Yeah, I mean, Iron Factory has their own style. Um, I mean, their, their figures are all pretty stylized. They have a few that are a little more reminis reminiscent of G1, but for the most part, they're more of a chuggish kind of look, I guess. Uh, they're just downscaled to, to legend size. So um, I think that they're... Honestly, I kind of like their, their plastic and their paint the best of the Legends figures. Um, like, I think they use pretty high-quality plastic. They're, uh, they, most of their figures are very well painted. Uh, I think the downside of a lot of, especially their older figures, is, is they're just not as well articulated as the other figures, uh, like Magic Square and New Age. Um, you know, their figures have a lot more articulation, but... Like, you can see where... So, Iron Factor has been around for, like, five years. And you can see the progression over the years to where now, and especially since New Age and, and Magic Squared, Iron Factory has really introduced a lot more articulation in their figures as well. And so, the newer ones, like, uh, they did a Hound, they did a, a Wheeljack and all that that uh, has a lot more articulation. So, anyway. Yes, but, definitely. And, you know, their signature is these kind of more bulky kind of stocky designs like with lots of I don't know like detailing and um I don't know they all look like they'd be like big beefy robots like they're not all blocky or like simple blocky figures but they're all like I don't know massive feeling they, they all look like they come from war within to me like Don Figueroa designed them they have that design characteristic to them and, and a lot of their older figures actually did homage the War Within. Like, they have uh, the Dinobots and uh, the Optimus Prime that they did was in the, the Megatron all have War Within designs. I think the um, Datsuns do, too. In the, yeah. 
So, yeah, and oh, sorry, but then they produce things like this that are completely out of character. The like super skinny, um, anime styled female figures, which is weird. But I've never even seen that before. You never seen yeah, my little slipstream? Slip I don't think so. Also came from Lucas, and cool. She's probably my favorite of the little little female figures, but they're honestly not that great. Yeah, I mean that's that's one thing. The uh, smaller female figures, um, like I've got this little shadow RC. Um, the articulate, like it's just like the feet aren't quite big enough to like really hold a pose well. Like it has good uh, ankle articulation. But it's just, I don't know, it's, like, hard for a lot of them to stand. And, like, the um, Windblade uh, mold, and I can't remember if that Slipstream, like, it, those have no ankle articulation at all, just the way that they're made. She but does. That probably has a, yeah, that one it does. But Yeah, the yeah. Slipstream has ankle articulation. She's, like, it's okay. She can stand well. It's just, like, you can't do a lot with her ankles. But no matter how you pose her, she stands pretty well. I mean, they're neat They're neat little figures, like the, the um, little female ones are, but... They're super unique. Nobody else has made things like this yet. Yeah. So they're cool. And cool and I mean, the combiner you know. sword. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. that version of the RC is awesome. And, and I guess we'll just get into it. Like, so what we're going to do is, is like a best of like our favorite yeah. figures. So, um, I can't pick, you know, I could have probably picked 10, but, um, Anna says that I was supposed to only pick two. So I, w- I split the difference and went with five. Initially I said, well, let's just, he was like, I want to pick our top. I think you said like top 50. And I said, let's just pick our top one. And we eventually came to that he has five and I have two. So that's something. And I have yeah. none. So, you have none, but you do yeah. own a few. Those I are your favorites own automatically. And yeah, so Christian, I guess your favorite is, is it, would it be turrets and manacle or would it be rush beats? Uh, I think turrets, then rush beats, then manacle. Okay. Well, there you go. Rush beats is the sure. jazz figure. Yes. Yeah, so Slammer, Jazz, and Six Gun. So, there, there you go. So, But unfortunately, you haven't packed away since you just moved. Show done. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, so I, I will go ahead and start. And mine... Me as well. I kind of feel like that I probably am cheating a little bit. Um, it's with my, <laughs> my one figure. Um, it's cheating. Well, and and this figure even comes with a bonus figure because it comes that's with the six figures. <laughs> it comes with that, so that's there, already more than the list. There, there we go. So this is how cheap. But okay, so this Bruticus figure is really really cool. Um, the it has really nice articulation. Um, like it has ankle articulation. Um, it just has a really cool look. Um, I don't know. I wish that the Hasbro Bruticus was, was this good. Uh, I know, you know, Christian and I were kind of, uh, debating earlier today about Combiner Wars and, you know, he was like, don't talk about bad about my Combiner Wars figures. And, and I agree that, debating. <laughs> that, that some of Lucas them was are, calling them trash and garbage. I was honorably defending them. Good well, words. Well, well. I was not saying that they were Whoa. trash. I was saying that they're 10% trash. I said they're 90% good and 10% trash. And so, because they don't have their articulation. See, Randall. You don't have the articulation. But, but see, the. <laughs> so, like, yeah, can, can the Combiner Wars guy do this? Like, I can't see this. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot that you can't see the thing. He's uh, I have to wait for the delay. He's he's rotating his waist. Can, can he rotate his waist? No. Yeah. So so there you go. Can Oops. you? Uh, yes. I just had a hand fall off. He still so. can. 
Um, the Brutus figure does look really good, though. I'm vaguely interested in getting the Ruination repaint. I would. Do you have the uh, the Takara Ruination? I do. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, it's like, well, if you don't have the Takara one, you might as well get, you know, this guy. Yeah, I have. But, I have all of the combiners. Oh wow! Look at you, Mister Fancy Pants. So yeah. I, I still am yet to get Grand Galvatron, or it was I'm trying to think if I have another one. I think that's the only one I got left. Well, you guys are talking about something completely different. I'm holding up the figure Lucas was talking about. He is pretty. I like him a lot. Or a vague approximation of the figure Lucas was talking about. Is there a difference? Yeah, because this is the Pocket Toys knockoff, the knockoff. of the Verticus. Oh. And a lot of people online have posted like, oh, it's just as good. Go ahead and buy it. It's about half price. And it's nonsense. It is not as good. If you like to, if you're buying this thing because it's a combiner that can actually pose, the Iron Factory <coughs> original poses really well. The Pocket Toys has very loose joints. And if you're like me and you really don't have the expertise of making the joints tighter, um, it just drives you crazy until you end up probably buying back the one that Lucas bought back from you that you bought from him. Wow, so that's happens. confusing. It's Have they done any confusing. other combiners, or is it just Bruticus so far? Um, so they haven't done another one yet. They're going. Uh, the DJD is actually going to be a combiner. Oh right. Yep. So it's a weird combiner. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's a little bit weird. I don't know. I mean, Iron Factory makes so many figures. They're so all over the place um, with their God. figures. Like, they're coming out with, um, what is it? The um, Isn't it the Beast uh, Beast Machines or Beast War? Like, what, aren't they doing some various Beast figures? Yeah, they're doing the, the Beast Wars Megatron and the, um, the Optimus Optimus, right? Yeah. And they're also doing the, um, aren't they doing another Optimus coming out as well? Maybe. I can't remember. I know um, that the, the Dragon Megatron is named Heat Death, and that's a great name. So I kind of really want it to be good. Yeah, that looks, that's coming out pretty soon, I think. So, um, yeah, so they, I mean, th like they dip in their toe in IDW, they're dipping their toe in G1. Like, they really kind of are, you know, have a large, you know, uh, swath that they're they're kind of doing. So they haven't done other combiners. So the only this is the only one they've done so far. But this one is really good, and I hope that they do more because, I mean, this is just a, you know, fantastic figure. So, and so one thing Iron Factory does is that whenever they do a lot of these figures, they actually will put in, like, pack-in figures um, I'm not really sure why they do it, I guess, is like, kind of like repaints. Um, so like their Seekers, for example, um, they would do like a little build a figure. So they give you like legs of the Sunstorm and the Ghost Starscream and the chest and like different ones. So you had to like buy all the Seekers if you wanted to build the other. So I guess it's kind of like their Marvel Legends kind of, uh, build a figure kind of thing That's or whatever. Neat. So... And the same thing with this, where um, it came with this little Stealth RC. And I think the, um, the Optimus Prime came with uh, an Alita 1 um, as well. So, And that one's hard to get now, the Alita yeah. 1 version. Well, that's the other thing about Iron Factory figures, that if you like decide that you want to collect them, is, is like, once they're gone, they're gone. Like, it's... So, they will... Um, they usually will do another run like right after the initial run uh, if it's popular, but then after that they're done. And if they re-release it, they actually will do like a repaint and update. And so I actually have some of those I'm going to show off. Um, but the originals like aren't, they don't re-release. And so because of that, some of their older figures are extremely valuable. So the Optimus Prime one goes anywhere between depending on where you can find it between 150 and 300 dollars so it's originally a 50 dollar figure this Bruticus is still reasonably easy to get though a lot of people yeah. still have them for sale so 
Yeah, I think the Bruticus, uh, they, they sold a lot of them, and uh, because of the knockoff, I think, too, that it's kind of hurt the demand a little bit on it. Yeah, so, <clears throat> and it is the knockoff. A lot of people swear by it, but I <clears throat> I swear at it. Yeah. I didn't think the knockoff was that horrible. Like, I think that, I don't know, like, if I was just to buy it, I'd probably just buy the knockoff just because it's 60 bucks and... You know, I don't know. But you I, also don't play with and pose your figures as much as I do. So for what yeah. I like to do, especially with my small figures, it's just not as good. You know, I, yeah. I pose it and mess with it and an arm flops. I get mad at it and I throw it and everything breaks. Yeah. Yeah. It's just terrible. I do want to say, though, about that figure is that the individual modes are not very impressive. The individual bots. Like, I really don't like them. See, I disagree. I actually think the individual figures are cool. Like, I, I really like them. I mean, they're chibi figures. Right. But I I personally like that. Um, I think that they look neat and they have their little, you know, style. Like, I don't think any of them look bad. They just look like Iron Factory figures. So. But they don't. They're just, they're so much simpler feeling. <clears throat> Than the other Iron Factory stuff. I just don't care for them. But the combined mode is really good. Okay, so my next one that I'm going to do here is I, I'm picking a Seeker. Um, but this could be all of them. Actually, the best one is Starscream. But Starscream is the most valuable, if I can actually get it on camera here. Um, Starscream is the most valuable. So, like, most of the Seekers you can find for, like, around the original retail price, except for Starscream who is like 150 bucks. So, <clears throat> or a hundred, something like that. So anyway, but, um, all these are really, really neat. I actually, um, so magic square and new age are both releasing seekers and those will probably be really good too. Uh, these probably, you know, will not seem quite as good because of, you know, like they're just an older mold. Um, but the paint on it's really neat. The style on it is really cool. Like I really like, the seekers yeah they're stylized they're i think they're cool too they nice. and these actually pose pretty well yeah and i feel like and i can get the, my stuff in focus the one thing that they have that most iron factory figures don't do well is they're on um, they have decent arm articulation because they don't have giant shoulder pauldrons the um, most Iron Factory figures get these giant shoulder extrusions that just get in the way of all arm posing. And that that's part of the reason I don't like a lot of the figures. And these um, the Seeker mold, which I actually like, um, does not have that. So it's nice. It poses pretty well. Okay. So that's my next one. And so then... I'm also going to pick a Dotson, and this is a super old mold. <clears throat> this is actually probably one of their first uh, molds. I think Christian, you talked about where it's kind of like the War Within uh, style. So um, this is a repaint. So this is the blue blue streak. Um, the original figures came in a three pack uh, of all of the the three Dotsons, and so if you want your cool IDW guys. These are like armed to the teeth. They've got missiles. They've got, you know, arm guns. They've got, you know, extra guns. There's actually another set of guns I didn't even like um, in include with this or whatever. But like if you want, um, you know, just a, a really cool representation of of the uh, Dotson guys, like I think that th this is a, a super cool mold. Oh, geez. I, I like Anna. So Anna made a comment to tune in in about an hour whenever we get to Anna's picks. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Jeez. Anna, you're on Get mute. your comment. And Anna's on mute. And can't robot when you're on mute. I said it wasn't me. It just happens to be one of our fans that shares my name. Yeah, my dog. Yeah. 
Is, is this like one of those those Russian accounts, like that, like steals your identity? But we work together because I like them. <clears throat> we became so. friends. I would watch that movie. <laughs> the unlikeliest of friends. <laughs> Oh, Lucas, can you hold up Blue Blue Streak so I can see it real quick? Oh, um, here, I'll, I'll put it in front of my camera so that you can actually see it, Christian. The thing is really cool looking. Yeah, no. Like, I would buy it if it was a real size toy. This is, um, so they put this, like, candy coat paint on uh, the re-release, and it looks really, really cool. So, like, I would, I would say that if you want one of this mold just to kind of have, like, this is the new one that they just re-released, and... I, I think it's really cool. So, how are the alt modes on those? Um, it looks like a Cybertronian car, so a blob of stuff. Also known as a rectangle of wheels. It's it's actually better than um, like I know you hated the drift. Um, it's it's 100% much percent hate. It, it, it's actually much better than that. Um, I would say my only complaint with this is is that. It doesn't really have our ankle articulation just because, like, the figure is super old. Um, so I would say that that's really the only drawback on this figure. But I think, I don't know. It just it looks really like a, a really neat figure, though. So, so yeah, they're about mid seat. All right, Anna, let's get to one of your figures since you are going to, you know, whatever. Don't want to. What? I was forever. just letting you talk forever. Sure. Jerome. All right. I'm going to talk about one of my figures. Oh, look at you. Aren't you innovative? So up next is going to be. This is the one I wanted to see. Whatever Will Jack's name is. Hex Hex French. French, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is Iron Factory's Will Jack figure. This is a recent one that I acquired because I went over to Lucas's to look at it and then I came home with it because it's super cool. Um, and the funny thing is, like, I don't actually usually do this for Legends figures. Usually I end up, like, having a Legends figures of a character and still keeping my MP for a while before I finally talk myself out of selling one or the other. Um, I just went home and took down my Masterpiece Wheeljack and put him in his box because... I've got my new one per character wheel jack. I like this better. Um, it has a reasonably faithful alt mode. It's not quite what I call Cybertronian. It's not what I call G1 either. It's just kind of like, you know, it looks like his alt mode. Um, it's got the good level of articulation. It's got a little bit of ab crunch, a little bit of waist articulation. Um, good arm movement, except for these, you know, Iron Factory standard issue shoulders that get in the way, but his aren't as bad as some others. Um, wrist swivel, which is always cool. Ankle tilt, which is essential for a figure to be worth anything. And it just has a really good look to it. And it really captures, like, it still has their, um... They're stylizing, like it still feels like a stylized Iron Factory figure, but it also just feels like Wheeljack. Like it doesn't have that, like, well, it's Wheeljack, but in Iron Factory's vision, but it's really just Wheeljack. It's super cool. That's what I noticed about it, too. And you guys know I don't do Legends figures, but when I saw the first pictures of this, I'm a big Wheeljack fan. So to see something that captured it that well was pretty interesting. It keeps tempting me. But I keep saying I don't collect legends. It's honestly like I want to say out of their like normal figures. So, you know, I usually consider the normal figures for a line anything that would be compared to deluxe normally. It's like the average size guys. Um, I'd say he's the best. He just mm -hmm. looks really good. He transforms easy. A lot of Iron Factory stuff doesn't transform easy. Um because of tolerances or the fact that the alt mode literally looks like a rectangle with wheels or some other indistinct blob. Um, so it's hard to transform because you don't know what it's supposed to look like. But he's, he's super easy. He feels like a, you know, like a chug figure level of complexity and transformation, but comes out looking really cool. It does look cool. So all of their cars or most of their cars are essentially a remold 
So it started off with the Racing Brothers, which was um, Sideswipe and Sunstreaker. And those were remolds of each other in the same pack. And then they released Red Alert. They released a G2 Sideswipe. And then they did it as uh, as Jazz. And so the Jazz is like, again, a retool. And then this is a retool of that Jazz figure. Um, and what's kind of surprising is, is like, with every iteration, they've actually gotten better. And so I feel like the Wheeljack is the best one, like, which is kind of funny. Like, you wouldn't think that, you know, if they keep doing remolds that, the like fourth iteration of the figure is going to be the best one. But I, I would agree that, you know, holding that in hand, like I, I like the rush beats a lot, like as a, an ID, IDW esque jazz. Like I like that one better than the racing brothers, but I think I like the wheel Jack, I think is by far the best version of all of them. Do you have rush beats in your list tonight? What? No, I don't. Do you? You, okay. you have so, you have my rush or the rush beats I had. So. Oh right, I forgot already. Even though we talked about that like four <laughs> seconds ago. Well, he is way over on the shelf over there, and I can't get him. He's too far. So, but but yeah, you know it's it's close enough. Whatever, you can look it up online. So right. you want to go to your number so I two? Guess- I guess I'll do my next one since I still have more than you, since you only have two. I um, should, I, I want to do the last one because I have the most important Iron Factory figure in my lap right now. So I am doing, um, so the Iron Factory, I, you know, the funny thing is, is I feel like that even though they're a Legends company, like they're bigger figures, I think are like actually better than, some, you know, a lot, like the bigger they are, the better they are. And so this uh, uh, Jetfire, uh, and I can't remember what's the name of it, Cygnus. Cygnus, um, yeah. Yeah, so Cygnus, like, it is a really cool figure. Um, so it has, you know, good articulation. It looks like Jetfire. It has a fun transformation. Um, and it's just, here, if you compare it like so it scales you know nice with the other legends figures um christian i guess for you all um so thanks i did not know that existed either yeah i know it's a good one this is a g1-esque uh jet fire and so it just i i think that um, you know, even if you're not an Iron Factory collector, like there's some of these figures where you can buy the Iron Factory and kind of fit them in with your other collections. And I think the Jetfire is one of those that like if you're, you know, doing a New Age collection or you're doing a Magic Square or something like that, like you can kind of fudge it with this one and and put Jetfire in with those other guys. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> And I want to say for the Jetfire, it's cool because most Jetfire toys actually end up being really big, right? Like, you know, we just got the Siege one and it's super cool. And see, the joke I was thinking of Peter was in Cygnus and in Health, but he went with Get Down with the Cygnus. So (laughs) I like all these bad jokes. They're great. Anyway, our younger viewers probably don't even know what Down with the Cygnus sickness sickness or whatever even is right we'll see my joke was more universal <laughs> this is not marriage anyway the, kids the point i was trying to make the point i was trying to make is that most jet fire figures end up being really big like you know if you're into phoenix or if you're into the siege figure they're cool. They're good figures. They're actually fun to play with. But a lot of times, big toys like that are kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like you can just pick them up and play with them as easily as you can a small figure like this. So it's nice to have a jet fire in that scale that you can mess with. I still like the Classics Voyager one from back in the day. I, I say you could have the Classics Voyager, and that one's actually probably not that much... It's up on my shelf up there, so I can't get it to it. But It's probably not that much bigger than that Iron Factory one. However, that Voyager one is garbage, so it's okay. Oh, my God. 
Jeez. <sighs> See, this is why, you know, we have to have these shows, right? Where Anna just has to, like, throw down on what we love, and then <clears throat> we can trash what she loves, so... There was only been one bad <clears throat> Classics Jetfire figure, and it was a Legends figure, so... All three sure. of the other ones were very good. Yeah, you mean that goofy one with the flip-out guns, right? Yeah. That's the one that we're talking about as being good? Yeah. Yeah. Toy rocks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, the toy uh, rocks, my socks. Also, that figure is from like 2006. So, and I that's mean, fine. That's fine. At the yeah. time, I bought it and I said, wow, this is a toy. And it was cool. And now it's long gone from my collection. You're, you're also angering Peter. So, and then after this, Sorry, like, Peter. Anna's going to like go and start trashing the classics Mirage as well. And we're just going to. Don't you dare. I have made my peace with that Mirage. It is not a bad figure. It just doesn't look like Mirage to me. That's fair. If I could have it as some skinny race car robot person who's a new person, I'd be cool with it. I just didn't like it as Mirage. I was scared there. I was worried. No, No, I understand that it's a good figure. I don't understand how anyone can think of that Jetfire as a good figure, but that's okay. Individual differences, it's okay. We're all still friends. Crossing oh, fingers. So anyway, okay, well, I guess I shouldn't have even picked this because then it opened a can of worms up. So, um, that's all, right. all right, so you wanted to go last, so I guess I'll do my next one, right? I do want to go this last. This is my last, my last one. So <clears throat> my next one is this guy, who is a little tiny tarn, and who doesn't love a tiny tarn? So adorable. I mean, look at this. I can't actually, but Except I will. Except for fine, for sure. a little here, here in a second. <laughs> for for you, we'll, we'll have it on. He's the so cute. Somewhere. You can put it back now. His little mask. Like, the only thing I don't like about this is is that, so, it looks almost identical. Like, it looks a lot like the uh, MMC figure, uh, but wow. it's tiny. Um, and, and really, all of their uh, DJD so far have, you know, somewhat resembled the MMC ones, uh, except for in, in a smaller scale. And it's just magnificent. So, <clears throat> Christian, here we go. If you take the mask off. Who is he? Your lighting isn't quite strong enough for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like Starscream to me, but it, it probably does not look like Starscream to you. Kind of, I guess. I don't that, know. that would have been a good flash but, you know, flash. but this actually what a has crazy like little... Flash it, but this has like the scratches on the face. And everything from. Uh, oh, that's actually better lighting. Okay, I see it. Yeah, that's you can see it now. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's just a cr- crazy what they did with this figure, um, and I mean just the the paint work. And so this is kind of what I talk about with you know some of these little figures. And yeah, I guess I I don't know what's up with my lighting today. Um. But, uh, but yeah, like the, um, you know, the paintwork on it is just incredible. I mean, for such a small figure, um, it pretty much does everything that the larger MMC figure does. It has an ab crunch, like it has, um, you know, waist swivel, it turns into a tank. It is just crazy. So, um, he is really good. I mess with his too. <clears throat> it's neat. Yeah. So the only uh, thing that bugs me about it is that it's not as um not as sturdy, right? It doesn't have breakage issues. So I I don't know how many people actually broke their figure, but um, they Iron Factor actually addressed it and put new shoulders in uh, with uh, the next figure. So you have to buy the Voss and Kaon 
to get the fixed uh, shoulders. Hmm. So, but but they did they did address it, and I believe that um, I think if you do break your uh, shoulders or whatever, and you don't want to buy them, I think you can still get it, the replacements from your from your retailer. Um, but it's pretty cool. I just personally, one of the things I really like about the um, the MMC one is just how easy he is to transform compared to how good he looks in robot mode. And you know, when I messed with the Iron Factory one, just the smaller size made him a little more of a pain to transform. So, like, you know, if I'm picking between the two, I'd rather have the MMC one. But the Iron Factory one is super cool, nonetheless. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's kind of my issue just in general, like, with the Legends figures is is that, honestly, they're just not as fun to mess with for me. And it may be just something that I've got, you know, my hands are a little bit larger and all that. Um, but for me, I would rather mess with, you know, a guy that is this size, that is, you right. know, like a chug, chug size figure, and manipulate that, than I would, uh, you know, some of the the legend figures. So, um, I, I kind of think feel like that that deluxe the Voyager scale is like really kind of perfect for me. That's why I think this Willjack is so darn noteworthy. Because I'm definitely the type of person I want my favorite version of a character, regardless of masterpiece, regardless of size, regardless of scale, regardless of who made it. I just want my favorite version of that character. And somehow a Legends figure ends up being my favorite version of the character compared to a perfectly competent masterpiece figure. Like, Masterpiece Wheeljack is not bad. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just think this is a neater toy. That's a pretty glowing recommendation. It is. It comes down to personal preference, though. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would listen to that and be like, oh, God, she's crazy because the masterpiece is way cooler than this little Iron Factory thing. But it's okay. But, I mean, the one thing that I'll say, though, is that, you know, a lot of these masterpiece figures, the older ones, are several years old. You know, they're almost... I don't know, I'm trying to think. How old is the original Wheeljack mold? I can't, is it like eight years old? Seven, six? I think it came out in 13 or 14. Okay, yeah. So so let, let's just say it's six years old. Um, and, and so it just doesn't have the same level of articulation as like what the Legends do. So like that's the thing is, is that a lot of, if you look at some of these Legends figures uh, between Iron Factory or... Uh, New Age or Mag- Magic Square, they actually put a lot of the masterpiece old transformations into these legend style figures. But then um, just because they figured out new ways of, of doing things, um, they have higher levels of articulation. So some of those old MP figures don't have, uh, you know, waist swivel, ab crunch. They don't have ankle tilts uh, all the time. Like some do, some don't. And so like that's where a brand new uh, Legends figure, you can get that, and it actually has better articulation, and it's it's thirty bucks instead of um, you know the you know whatever eighty dollars or whatever that you might spend on an MP. See, that's where it's going to come down to it, though. Like as far as resale value, I'm going to get barely more out of my Wheeljack than I paid for this. Because of, you know, just changes in market and the fact that there's a KO out for him and all that stuff. So that's a bit of a bummer. A lot of people get really pissy about the price of these figures. To totally understand that. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a whole debate just online. And I mean, this goes to Siege and all that, too. There's like age old debate about the size and and whatever and so people all you know complained about the waffles and all that and so you know like a lot of these figures like when you look at the iron factory like the parts count of this stuff the paint you know all that type of thing it's like there's there's a lot of engineering uh that goes into these figures uh and, and fit and finish or whatever so it's like you know yeah it's only one component the like size and amount of plastic i'm sure that that's 
I, I feel like that's somewhat of a just a one small part of it, you know. Like if they if they took that figure and they made it double in, in size or whatever, right? Like <clears throat> it's not going to cost them twice as much to to manufacture, more than likely. I mean, I guess I guess it probably depends on how big the molds have to be and all that. But anyway. Yeah, so go on, do, yep. do your last. Uh... So I did the last, last, um, not the, the last Iron Factory figure ever that yeah. anyone ever needs. This is perfect. Until the okay. Siege, so, until the siege one. Uh, Hasbro one comes out. Oh, nonsense. This thing will be better than that. So last one is Lord Scorpion, which is their version of Scorponok who has an awesome name because Lord Scorpion is simple, but fun. And um, yeah, this is definitely by far my favorite Iron Factory figure. And honestly, like it's on, it's on my short list of favorite toys I own because of just how fun it is to play with. Um, Lucas made the point earlier with Cygnus that Iron Factory actually gets better um, for their figures as they get bigger. So when they make the big toys, they tend to come out better, which is why I'm looking forward to Heat Death. I hope that him being a bigger figure, he'll be as good as this. But this is just a really impressive little Scorponok. It does everything a Scorponok is supposed to. It has its cool Scorpion mode, which I'm not going to do right now. Um, it's relatively easy to get to. Um, it just looks super cool. I guess he has a little bit of a deformed look to him, some people say, but I think he looks about right with his other um, Legends figure friends. And yeah, I, I don't really know what else I can say about it other than this figure is just super cool to me. I just really enjoy it. It poses well for a, for a Scorponok. I mean, no Scorponok's going to have tons of posability because of what he is. And it has all three modes. You know? Um, as well, too. Yes. So it has a base mode and and all that too. So yeah, yeah I mean, I, teeny tiny headmaster. I, I will say, really? I mean, for for that figure, yeah. Can you show off the headmaster? Um, yep, yep. So so he's coming up and down, opens the headmaster, headmaster comes out. Oh, sorry, what's that? I said the helmet opens up and little headmaster comes out. See, empty helmet. Yep. And little headmaster is here. That is teeny tiny. Wow. Uh, itty bitty headmaster. They didn't and, have to do that. And I think that's really you, cool. I think if you want a representation, a cool representation of Scorponok, like, okay, this figure was, I think it was sixty. And, I think, um, I yeah, think around there. It's original retail, I think. Um, like, you're not going to be able to find another Scorponok for that. Like, if you want the original G1 Scorponok, by the time you get a complete one, it's like a couple hundred bucks or so. And, um, you know, if you want the, the Make Tours Pandanus, like, that's, you know, three, four hundred dollars. So, um, yeah, I, I, I know uh, Peter and, and Randall are both talking about the, the little uh, Black Zarek version of, of this guy, too. That I bought one of those for Duran once. Yeah, it's just, like I said, I'm not going to show it on camera, but the transformation actually is reasonably easy. Like, it's not really hard at all. And it's fun to do. And the Scorpion mode it comes out with, it um, I have that thing climbing it on my um Metroplex for months because it just looks cool, kind of like climbing up him, trying to destroy him because it does look like a cool robot scorpion thing. Like it just pulls off the um, important molds, modes, not molds. And yeah, yeah it's just super cool. I think that's the main thing with a lot of these uh, Legends figures is, is they're kind of just a, a breath of fresh air, you know, compared to some of the Masterpiece where, you know, they're, they're cheaper, they're more fun. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of the higher end collectors end up doing this instead of Hasbro. Um, but, um, 
yeah, just because it's like they want something that's fun to fun to mess with and, you know, just have a little despot um, kind of thing, but still have a highly articulated, well-painted, you know, figure. So, um, yeah, a it, lot of times when you own smaller figures, you feel like they're kind of like, you know, they're your cheap, crappy impulse buy figures in your collection. But with these guys, you don't feel like that at all, right? They feel just as, they feel like little premium versions of the characters. Like this feels just as premium as most of the masterpiece stuff in my collection. And I really like my masterpiece stuff. I just feel like, you know, he is a, what, six, seven inch tall level of it being that good. Yeah, I, I feel that um, I know Randall in the, the comments was talking about how that uh, Lord Scorpion fits in with an IDW shelf. And uh, and I agree, like if he was just a little bit bigger, like oversized, he I would actually think he would fit in because I'm trying to think in the IDW, um, you know, universe, like if you're trying to do like a Hasbro IDW shelf, he would. He's, I mean, it's a little Grimlock sized, right? Yeah. So like, bigger, they, maybe not a lot. If they oversize them just a little bit more. Uh oh, we lost Christian. Did we? Oh dear. Yeah, your video is not. I'm yeah. still here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at Christian right now in the Skype video. Oh, that's so. weird. I don't know. I lost him on my Skype video. Yeah, he's not showing up in the web video either. Well, yeah, because it's not showing up on my Skype video. I waited goodbye to Christian. Well, that's weird. Okay, well. Okay, so I'm now, here. now, like, Christian's here, but not Anna. What the hell's going on? Oh, here we go. Hi, oh, I am back. here. We're back. Don't worry. Oh, we lost Anna again. What the heck's going on? Well, there's your tech difficulties for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> There, there you go. We we had to have, you know, some type of tech. I mean, we ran there. almost a whole hour tonight because Lucas brought 50 figures to a favorite show. And we didn't have oh. any tech difficulties till now. So so now, like, we're all showing, but I, like, lost my background, so. <laughs> so. Oh, we just call it a night team. This is how it works. Hey, hold on. Let me get. Ah, the background's back. There we go. Woo. All right. All right. Well, with that, uh, I don't know if we have anything else. Um, Peter or Randall, like, do you guys have any favorites uh, or, or any comments that you want to throw in before we go? I have to wait for like two minutes. For them to... Randall says that Scorpion's Magnus size in the comics. They actually are coming out um, with a new IDW Ultra Magnus that looks pretty sweet. Because Iron Factory's first Ultra Magnus kind of isn't very good. Oh, my God. I just lost Christian again. To quit losing. They're not going anywhere. I'm not even going to say it's okay, on, honestly. They're all one. They're all Magnus. Yeah, As a yeah. connoisseur of Magnuses. I like to look at that new Magnus, but I don't want to pay $80 for a Legends figure. Yeah. I agree. But... Then again, he's going to be this big. So it's, okay. you know. He's going to be bigger than that. dollars for a. It's almost like a leader size. size. I mean, you'll pay, you'll pay $80 There's, for a leader There's There is no figure. way it's leader sized. Uh, probably not. Uh, let's that see. I'm trying lie. to find a. Um, this used to be a deluxe size figure, but now it's not anymore because I made a mess out of it. But here's a comparison for you in size. <laughs> uh, you know so the the camera went out anna and then now it just came in and you have your like, <laughs> monstrosity on camera there so that's good I, I think this is a good one to end on so all right well thanks everyone and uh you know check out uh next uh tomorrow night we're gonna have uh out my wallet uh, then we're going to have uh, cut the tape on Friday and uh, we're going to uh, be back to a live TFLP on Sunday uh, where we're going Ooh. to be talking about the um, all the wonders of New York Comic Con and Anna's going to come and crap all over it. So 
That's right. I'm, I'm going to say none of it's it. as good as Magic Square. Give me a split. So, We're going to get in a brawl. It's going to be great. Anyway. All right. Well, yes. um, and if you if you like what we do and all that, too, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Patreon dot, Patreon.com slash TFLP. So, anyway, with that, uh, have a good night, everyone. Good night, lovely people.